So, you've completed Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee and you're starting to run out of things to do. This video is going to be a comprehensive look at 25 things you can do once you've completed these games. Let's first get into daily activities you can do, of course, every single day, as a way to make money and farm important items. These daily activities are all a fantastic way to make money to afford Pokeballs, lures and various other commodities in the postgame. You're first going to want to go to the underground sections that connect Route 5 to Route 6 as you're going to be able to find a hidden nugget and a hidden pearl. Locations will be on screen. And then the underground section that connects Route 7 to Route 8 to find a hidden nugget and a hidden big pearl. These respawn daily at midnight, so make sure you're getting these every single day. Visit the Safari Zone Warden's house in Fuchsia City and push the boulder to reveal Diglett, and that Diglett is also going to give you a nugget every single day as well. You can battle Mina at Vermilion City's port every single day and she will give you a bottle cap for beating her. These are incredibly useful items for competitive battles so you will definitely want to get your one guaranteed bottle cap every single day. Also if you're in need of more money head to Pewter City and look after the Slowpoke as you're going to be able to get a big pearl once again every single day just for performing this small action. The Celadon City Game Corner has six hidden items that spawn ranging from a variety of candy to even PP ups and golden bottle caps. Make sure you're getting them every single day. Heart Scales a very important item for relearning moves are hidden items that spawn and respawn every single day in Seafoam Islands. Make sure you're getting both of them every single day. Running along Route 16, you're going to be able to find many, many hidden berries, which you can either sell or use to make catching Pokemon easier, and will respawn every single time you leave the route, making it a fantastic way to farm unlimited berries. If you head to Cerulean Cave, not only is it home to the highest level Pokemon, in the game, it is also home to these little sparkling areas in the first floor that spawn and respawn hidden items every 10 minutes or so, and can range from golden berries to fossils and even master balls if you're lucky. Once you've completed the game, you're going to be able to rebattle every single gym leader once a day, every day, which is a fantastic way to make money, and it's fun taking on gym leader blue for the very first time. You can also rebattle the Elite Four as many times as you like every single day however be prepared as gym leaders and the elite four will have much more competitive higher level teams finally every day you're going to be able to battle green you first battle her inside Cerulean Cave, the location where you first catch Mewtwo. However, she will then be located by the Cerulean City Bike Shop to rebattle her once a day. Now, onto goals you can set yourself within the game. These aren't repeatable daily activities, well, not in the same essence as the previous points, but larger, overarching goals. You can obtain every gift Pokemon, such as the three starters, the fossil Pokemon, Lapras, Porygon, Hitmonlee or Hitmonchan from Saffron City Dojo, as well as Arcanine or Persian depending on the game you're playing. Also, make sure to catch the legendary Pokemon Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, as well as Mewtwo. The legendary birds can be caught in the main story, but Mewtwo can only be found once you've beaten the Elite Four and the Champion in Cerulean Cave. Also, make sure to get every Alola form for the 18 eligible Kanto Pokemon. Pokemon like Vulpix, Sandshrew, Grimer, Meowth and Marowak all get Alola forms, and they can easily be gotten from trades via NPCs in various Pokemon centers in the game. A link will be in the description to where you can find them. Performing all these actions should result in you completing your Pokedex and thus earning the eligibility to earn the Shiny Charm, which is arguably the biggest goal in this game. You obtain the Shiny Charm from Game Freak's offices in Celadon City. Once you have the Shiny Charm, it is going to be a little easier to Shiny Hunt in this game using the various methods in this game, which include racking up catch combos of 31, as well as trading with the various Alola trade NPCs until you get a shiny Alola form. If you're not interested in shiny Pokemon, you can catch combo 31 Pokemon, which in turn will make it so any Pokemon of that species has four perfect IVs, which will be vital if you're trying to build a competitive team to battle online and against friends with. And once you've gotten a team of six, use the Cerulean Cave Chansey method to grind out 
about your team to level 100. A tutorial on how to do this in depth will be in the description down below. Once your team are high enough levels, you can take on the master trainers which are located in the overworld. Once you've defeated the elite four, a link to a tutorial on how to beat these and locate these will also be in the description. Finally, once you've defeated six master trainers, Red is going to be able to be battled outside of the Pokemon League. But be warned, he has a team of Pokemon all in the level 80s, so he will be very, very difficult to beat. Other smaller tasks you can perform that aren't exactly long-term goals include finding every TM and beating every coach trainer. You need to beat every coach trainer to find every TM, so you may as well knock out two birds with one stone. While you're at it, you can get every single Megastone. You get given the Megastones for the starter Pokemon by Professor Oak in the main story, but for the rest, you need to get them from an NPC in the Pokemon League for 30,000 Poke Dollars each after beating the Elite Four once, as well as obtaining Mewtwo's two Mega Stones from Cerulean Cave after catching it. Make sure to get the IV Judge function for your Pokemon summary screen from Route 11 for catching 30 different species of Pokemon. This will help you judge how good your Pokemon are. Make sure every single week you are using your Mystery Box in Pokemon Go, given to you for transferring Pokemon from Let's Go to go to catch Melton. Once you have earned 400 Melton candy in Pokemon Go, you can then evolve Melton into Malmetal and transfer it into Let's Go to complete your Pokedex. Finally, the last point on this list, obtain and purchase every single piece of clothing for your character and your partner Pokemon in this game, including the dreaded 999,999 Poke Dollar Crown from Celadon City Department Store. Once you have done all of this, you can truly say that you've beaten Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So I've currently ended up putting roughly 80 hours into the game, that's not including time that I've soft reset for things. All in all, it's probably about 100 hours, which is ridiculous since the 15th, it's only been 12 days, that's quite disgusting. But I just want to go over a couple of my favourite things to do in the game, just because, I don't know thought I'd show you. So my favourite thing to do in any Pokemon game is to assemble just an army of competitively viable Pokemon. So for example, right now, a Pokemon that I'm working on is Raticate. Uh, it's Jolly Nature. I have maxed out its Awakened values, which is fantastic. I'm still working on levelling it up. I need to get it to level 100. But yeah, I just really like assembling an army of really powerful Pokemon. I also really like shiny hunting and I normally put the two together. I shiny hunt while looking for competitively viable Pokemon. For example, I've got this Jolly Nidoking right here with maxed out awakened value. So its stats are just ridiculous. It's level 100. This is a Pokemon I use to take on the Elite Four, uh, just to grind out the Elite Four and earn a ton of money. So I've taught it Payday, which is going to, I think it doubles the amount of Poke Dollars you get per battle, just like it used to work in previous Pokemon games. Um, if it didn't have Payday, it would have Superpower. I'm going to teach it Superpower for when I actually have a competitive online battle. I still don't have Nintendo Switch Online, so I haven't done any battles just yet, but this is a real favorite Pokemon of mine. I'm so proud of this. So it's got maxed out IVs. I have hyper trained it. I only needed to hyper train its speed. Fortunately, it came with five perfect IVs using the 31 catch combo method. So very, very lucky with this Nidoking. There's still a couple of Pokemon I'm still working on. So for example, this Gyarados, it's jolly natured. A pretty good move set. I don't know what to use as my fourth move just yet as it doesn't get access to Dragon Dance. But again, I've maxed out its awakened value use. Just really, really fun Pokemon to use. Of course it Mega Evolves as well. Uh, it's really cool seeing shiny Pokemon either follow you in the overworld or it's just amazing to see you ride on top of it. Just like with this Jolly uh, Adamant Arcanine right here. It's so cool seeing the character, the main character ride around on this. Still need to boost up its speed, I need to get it to level 100, uh, but one of my favourite things to do in this game, of course, is shiny hunt. I've got all the Pokemon I've shiny hunted for favourited, so I can simply 
show you all them now. It's going to mess up the order just a little bit. But this Rattata was found while I was trying to get 300 Rattata to trade to the uh, NPC that trades you Alolan Rattata. So I could shiny hunt for them on stream, stuff like that. Shiny Spearow found completely randomly. Uh, shiny Mankey I found during my Let's Play. Uh, Gengar, which I've transferred over from Pokemon Go, from the Pokemon Go Gengar raid day earlier this month. I also have a Chansey that I found randomly in the Cerulean Cave while grinding levels. Pinsir that I also transferred over from Pokemon Go from the Gengar raid day. A random Magikarp I found while I was shiny hunting for Shouter, hence the naive nature. Uh, Gyarados and Eevee as well as Vaporeon and Flareon from Pokemon Go Community Days. I love shiny hunting in these games. I also like trying to make as many competitively viable Pokemon as possible. That's what I like to do in these games, just to keep myself interested. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys do to keep yourself entertained, to keep yourselves interested, invested in the games once you've completed the main story of these games. A like would be absolutely amazing if you found this useful. Subscribe so you don't miss any more of my future Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee walkthrough guide videos and I'll see you guys in my next video tomorrow. Peace out.